So first up, let's get right at it, is uh, the race for county prosecutor, and uh, we have D.J. Hilson here. Uh, Jeffrey Green was unable to attend as far as I know. And so, D.J., if you would come forward and give us just a brief bio on why you're running for office. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the J.C.s. As a former J.C., uh, I guess we call, we call each other, we're roosters after we age out, is that right? So as a rooster of this great organization, it's, it's a pleasure to be take part in it. Uh, I'm running for re-election. Uh, I'm currently your elected county prosecutor. I've been uh, in, in the prosecutor's office for over 17 years, uh, and this has been uh, kind of my career. I graduated from law school in 1999 with honors and uh, joined the Muskegon County Prosecutor's Office as an assistant, worked my way uh, from assistant to APA2 to senior, uh, trying some more serious felony cases towards the end of my uh, assistant career in, in 2012, Mr. Tay retired, uh, left open the seat. Uh, I ran, was successful, and have been here elected since. And the reason why uh, I ran for office is that uh, I truly believe in the power of the prosecutor's office, not only from the sense of providing uh, public safety uh, to the citizens, but also being a voice in the community. One of the things that I've strived for over these last three and a half, four years is, is to be a very active uh, public servant, because I truly believe as elected officials, we are servants of the public. And, and I kind of put my money where my mouth is in, in involving myself in a lot of different organizations and groups, including uh, obtaining leadership roles in those groups, and really uh, trying to offer whatever assistance uh, that the prosecutor's office can have in, in implementing positive change for the student county, but more importantly, positive change for our young people. Uh, I really believe that the foundation for any society, any uh, area in the community is, is the youth, and I focus a lot of my time and energy in developing positive, reinforcing programs to get our young people motivated and, and educated uh, so that they understand, truly understand the power of what their voice is, but more importantly, the opportunities that are there for them if they, in fact, go on forward and, and become educated and be success, successful. Excuse me. So, uh, I'm going to, I certainly intend on con continuing uh, those very strong programs that we have developed uh, since my tenure. I also uh, will continue the very strong relationship and partnership that I have with every single police agency uh, in this uh, community and, and develop and work on those uh, areas that we need to work on as far as uh, public safety is concerned. Because at the end of the day, it's all about making sure that the student strives to become the best county in the state of Michigan, and that, that truly is, is my goal, uh, and uh, I think we're headed in the right direction, uh, and I'm looking forward to continuing that in the next four years. Thanks, DJ. Tony. Mr. Helson, can you please uh, explain putting your nail into it for everyone, please? Thanks. Thank you. So, uh, I painted, uh, thanks to Tony, uh, it, I painted my nail, my ring finger, purple. Well, actually, my daughter did for me, my seven years and the reason why is October is uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And, you know, uh, my office, uh, obviously, we deal with domestic violence victims and defendants every day. And, and so, and I've basically dealt with them my entire career. So I know the dynamic of what a victim goes through when it comes to domestic violence. And so it's very easy to support important causes. And the cause that, uh, that Tony's talking about is, uh, and you got to help me out, it's, Get hashtag, the, hashtag get the nail. Put your nail. Put your nail in it. Put a nail in it. And it's and it's a national movement when I and I love it. And it's it's really challenging uh, males and females to paint their ring finger purple, fingernail purple. And it's in recognition of the victims and survivors of domestic violence. Uh, and and uh, you know, I took it one step further. I sent an email out to my office, and if you if you followed my office on Facebook, you've seen the pictures that we had several members of my office, my support staff and lawyers, and my canine advocate dog, uh, paint their nail purple. Uh, and we posted that picture on our Facebook page because, you know, as I said, every day we're dealing with domestic violence victims and, and uh, helping them work through uh, the, those cycles of abuse and the struggles uh, that they go through as they try to deal with that. And uh, to me, this was a very easy gesture. And so I appreciate uh, being, a, being able to be a part of that and, and help further the movement, so thank you, good question. Thank you. One more question for DJ before he leaves. He's got to wear a purse tonight. That's right, I, I, I'm headed to Power of the Purse. If anybody has tickets, uh, 
I have to change out of the suit into my modeling clothes and I'm modeling purses tonight for every woman's place, which is a domestic violence shelter. So we're helping them raise money there. Good luck. Raise a lot of money. Any questions for DJ? I don't see any. Thanks, DJ. I have a question. Oh, go ahead, sir. Um, I don't know. I kind of just walked in. I don't know if this is your expertise. But, like, one of the shiniest new buildings downtown happens to be in prison. And um, at the same time, you know, we have dead schools abandoned. Um, do you have any input on that? I don't know if that's necessary. Well, you're talking about two separate things. The, the, the county doesn't control the school building. That's a yes. city control. The city doesn't control the jail. That's a county control. Uh, so so from, my, from my standpoint, um, the, the condition of our old jail was in such bad shape that it was costing more to renovate and keep and maintain, which put both inmates and staff in jeopardy on a daily basis. And so and you never want to say that a jail is a necessity. Uh, but, you know, certainly people are going to make bad decisions every day. And sometimes those bad decisions are going to require them to take a time out and be incarcerated. So the fact that we needed a new facility was, was definite. But as far as the funding goes, that wasn't a city funding stream, that's a county funding stream. And believe me, I know because, you know, we, my office, just like a lot of other county offices, felt a pretty big budget pinch. Uh, and I'm not saying that it's because of the jail, but I'm just saying that we all recognize the importance of what every department means to the county uh, and the importance that we have to all function and work together. All right. DJ, thank you. Go raise a lot of money. Thank you. I'm uh, hoping to be the most. <laughs>